Mr. Davidson, welcome at our university television. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. You have a great presentation about the food, one of the favorite things of all people. So you have uh, talked about food on conferences. Is there anything uh, special that you have uh, to emphasize in, in this point? What, what is the main point on conference? What should we do? What should we serve on conferences? Well, it's a great question. And I think that uh, in conferences, the food is something special. It should be memorable, something that people enjoy, and something because it's something that people look forward to. It breaks the routine of speaker, speaker, speaker. It gives them an opportunity to relax, to refresh themselves, also to, to meet other people, to network. A lot of the networking at conferences happens during the meal uh, breaks or, or the coffee breaks. So it's a very important part of the conference. If you're a conference organizer, you're going to get more complaints about the food than, than the any other aspect, than the speakers, than anything, the venue. They're going to complain about the food. The common complaints are uh, not enough variety, or the food was too cold, uh, or there wasn't enough food. So the food is really important. People will judge the conference by the quality uh, of the food. So we, we have to get it right. It's something very important. It is something, uh, there's art in serving food on conferences. You said that uh, you, you should uh, have in mind that people are meeting around the food. So is that an important part of uh, serving food on conferences? Absolutely. And that one aspect of that is is that people should be able to meet and chat and exchange business cards very easily. Now that's not easy if you're holding a glass of wine in one hand, food in another hand and trying to give a business card. So we look at food which is can be eaten very easily, maybe with just one fork or high tables so people can put their glass on the table and have hands uh, free. You need to think about all these things. The, each meal should be a little different. It should look different. So conference organizers are also responsible for thinking about the design of the, the tables, the color schemes. Uh, it's, it's exciting and you need a lot of imagination to be a conference organizer when it comes to planning the food. The word I use is the wow mm -hmm. factor. What, when, what is wow factor? Wow means when people walk into the room for a banquet or a gala dinner, when they see how the room is decorated, how the tables are decorated, the lighting, the candles, even before they see the food, they should go, oh wow, this is amazing, I'm going to have a, a fantastic evening. So that's really important, especially for those big formal dinners at the end of the conference. So what is the difference in food for, for example, science conference, meetings, political conferences, etc.? Is there any difference? It, there really is a difference. What you need to do is to look at the objectives of the meeting. Why are we having this meeting? Who will be there? What are their expectations. So you mentioned, for example, um, political meetings. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at meetings like the, the presidents and the European Union... They, do not, they don't eat. They don't eat. They eat. They're not there for the food. The food must be nice, but they're really there to, uh, to speak, uh, to, to chat to the person uh, next to them. So they don't want food that is difficult to eat. You're never going to see spaghetti mm -hmm. at these meetings because it's difficult to eat. You get it on your shirt. And so easy to eat food, easy to digest. Uh, quality is important for meetings like that because they expect the best. So they won't drink very much wine, but the wine should be the best. Now, on the other hand, if the conference is for young people like yourself, uh, they expect the food to be a bit more relaxed, uh, familiar, so they're comfortable with uh, sandwiches, uh, pizza, uh, sushi, things like that, because they enjoy uh, those foods. If the conference is a business conference of, let's say, a, a company, and the company is taking all their managers to a, a hotel for a one-day meeting. Well, the food's important because the food is a way of the company showing the managers, listen, we really appreciate you. Uh, we're having this We're meeting. doing our best. We're doing our best. You're a VIP. So here's a wonderful lunch with great wines, champagne. And after a lunch like that, people feel, yeah, great. This company really appreciates me. I'm going to 
continue to work for this company. So your question is great. You go back to the objectives of the conference and the people who are going to be there, what are their expectations? So is there any occasion that you uh, should not serve food? You should serve only drinks? Never, never. Alcohol is one of the biggest challenges, I would say, at a conference. It's expensive, so it takes away a lot of the budget, especially if your conference is in a Scandinavian country, for example, where it's really You, you said that they drink a lot also. Well, when Scandinavians <laughs> come to a conference in countries like yours in Macedonia, they're amazed at how cheap uh, the, the wine is and so on, and they can go crazy. <laughs> Not always, but they, there's a possibility. Um, alcohol it gives you a lot of headaches, and I don't just mean a hangover. Um, always serve food even if it's just snacks it slows down the um, the absorption of alcohol into your blood uh, if you have no food then people drink more and it goes to their head very very quickly and you don't want that uh, you want people to be drinking and enjoying themselves but not getting drunk uh, because then people are difficult to control uh, I've seen conferences where almost there's been a fight Whoa. yeah between speakers because they because drank they too much uh, yeah now no uh, alcohol without food um, is there any any possibility that you should you should serve alcohol and why you should serve alcohol well of course it's very cultural um, at lunchtime in Western Europe I would say it's very unusual to see alcohol at lunch and that's for a very good reason drinking at lunchtime everybody knows after a few glasses of wine you're tired you're a bit sleepy you're not drunk but you're not really able to listen 100% to the speakers in the afternoon. So you're wasting your time. The speakers are wasting their time. So, of course, in the evening it's difficult. People kind of expect alcohol with their dinner at the conference uh, dinner in the evening. But no alcohol at lunchtime is becoming a, a, a rule uh, for conferences just to make the conference more um, successful. There's religious considerations as well. Some people don't drink alcohol. I've because just, of religion, yeah? Because of their religion. I've been to two conferences in Saudi Arabia. Of course, there's no alcohol at all uh, at those conferences, so you don't even um, expect it. But alcohol management is a very important part of a conference organizer's responsibilities. Yes, having alcohol, but controlling it. Telling the bar man, bar woman, don't serve people who are visibly drunk. Or maybe not strong alcohol, just wine and beer. Wine and beer are okay. People know how strong they are. Cocktails are a disaster. You look at a cocktail, it could be almost n no alcohol or it could be this much alcohol. And you don't know until you've had three or four and you're on the floor. <laughs> then you think, yes, there, were, there was a lot of alcohol in that cocktail. So that is not advisable. Wine, yes. And, and but not spirits, beer of course. And the other thing um, I mentioned is when it's dinners at tables mm -hmm. and you have waiters, tell them not to fill up the glasses. Why? Because then people forget how much they've had to drink. If your glass is always filled up to the top, you look at your glass and you say, well, have I had two glasses of wine or six glasses of wine? And you don't know. Let the delegates finish their glass and then if they want to fill it up or better still make them go to the bar with their glass and ask then they remember how much they have had to drink and it will slow them down um, which is good for everybody it's good for them too you have mentioned uh, labeling food is uh, important uh, why is that it's important if you have an international conference and the food of the, the country is unfamiliar then you know for example uh, Jurek this dish from uh, Serbia you know uh, I look at it and I don't know what it is Imagine Jurek Jurek Burek Burek, Burek. Yeah, sorry, you're meaning on Burek, Burek. Burek. <laughs> Imagine you come from China yeah, It's nice food you like it? I like it but yeah. uh, the first time I saw it I, I thought what is it you know and if I come to Macedonia and I see Simit Pogacha Pogacha yeah. I've never had it I don't know what it is so it's important to have labels preferably in different languages or as I saw in a recent conference no words but symbols so a little fish symbol if it's fish uh, a cow if it's beef 
uh, a pig if it's pork. That helps everybody in all languages because we can all recognize those. You're traveling a lot, I guess. So what is the most common mistakes that you're facing on conferences about the food and the drinks? Not enough variety. People get bored. One dinner is like the dinner before. That's not good. Um, a big mistake which people make at conferences is letting the food go cold. And that's very often the fault of the speakers. One big problem at conferences is people speak for too long, more than they should. And therefore the lunch is delayed, the lunch is served outside, but it's getting cold because everybody spoke for 20 minutes and they should speak for 15 minutes. The waiters are angry, the, the caterers are angry, and nobody likes cold food. That's a big problem. That means the organizers of the conference really should make sure that the speakers keep to time. You know, when they've had 10 minutes, tell them, you have five more minutes, you have two more minutes, you have one more minute and stop. Because the food is getting cold, that's a big uh, problem. So what do you think, uh, on conference, should they serve traditional food on the state or they should serve international food? I think people, when they're visiting another country, they like to try the food of the country. Uh, they don't want food all the time that they can get um, at home. They want some familiar food as well. But I would always say, let's have something special from the country, but label it, what's in it, is it vegetable or dessert or something like that. Um, that's a, sp a special part of the conference. Special wines, if it's a country like uh, Macedonia, with a wine industry, then you want to serve those wines because it's part of the cultural experience of going to a country. And when you go to a lot of country, a lot of conferences in different countries, it's absolutely fascinating to see how they, how they are different, how the food is different, how they are organized differently. It's very enriching. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, my last question would be, what do you think about this conference? They have coffee and croissant? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had, I have one coffee a day and I just had it, it was very nice. And uh, it's a, so far it's been a great conference. I'm very excited about the rest of the day and hearing the other speakers. It's been extremely well organized, every detail, the flights, the hotel, the information I needed always came before I knew I needed it and that's very, very efficient. So I would say a huge uh, congratulations to the organizers. Mr. Rob, thank you for the conversation. It's a pleasure. Thank you for your questions.